You know, I don't usually endorse demonstrations that uh, put me in danger, <laughs> but this is one that I just had to show. It's, it's uh, pretty spectacular. I, I assume you know that there's a nationwide shortage of blood for, you know, blood donations. And the Red Cross is always looking for ways to get people to donate blood that's not as scary as a needle. And this is a new experimental solution they're coming up with. Um, it's called nitrogen trihydride. It's uh, rather spectacular because all you have to do is, it's an experimental stage right now, but I've been told is just soak your skin in some extremity, a foot, a hand, in the solution. And it really doesn't hurt that much at all. And it opens up the pores in your skin, okay? And, um, ooh, there we go. And once it does that, it gets in there and starts to loosen the capillaries. And the idea is that they could just kind of shake the blood right through the skin. I know it sounds kind of disturbing, but, you know, some people would prefer that over a needle. And, ooh, there, you see that? Uh, those pores just kind of opening up there. Oh, ooh, I'm dripping here. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. You can just literally just kind of shake blood right out of your hand like that. Ah, okay. Ah. That was just a bunch of baloney. Uh, it is nitrogen trihydride, but that's more commonly known as ammonia. And no, that's not my blood on the page right there. Um, it's simply a nice little indication of an acid-base indicator. Goldenrod paper, just common goldenrod paper, happens to have a dye in it that is an acid-base indicator. And ammonia, being a base, turns it that bright red color. You can also just uh, spray it on, get nice little instant signs like that. This was done with tape. You might have seen it beforehand, but now it becomes much more evident. I also have something written here that was written with wax, not quite as clean, but a lot more invisible beforehand, a lot easier to write with um, than the tape is. You might notice that my blood is fading from this first uh, hand swack there, and that's because ammonia, along with being a base, is also quite volatile. That is, it evaporates quickly off the surface. So I could actually reuse these very next period without having to put new ones up. That's great. Um, the other alternative, besides using ammonia, or spray it on, I've got some um, Q-tips here. And this is a good idea for students who are doing some individual little artwork. I'll take some of the ammonia and show you what that looks like as I put some on. Kind of like magic markers there. Out of the blue that comes up. But again, goes on very intense, very bright to begin with, but then immediately starts to fade as it, as it uh, diffuses out into the room. What about baking soda? Okay, this is a different Q-tip. Baking soda is also a base, but check this out. It does just the opposite. It goes on, barely visible, but then as the water evaporates off and what's left behind becomes more and more concentrated and therefore more and more basic, we get it developing. At the same time the ammonia is fading, the baking soda solution is becoming more and more intense. Okay? So you can do all kinds of neat artwork with this. Um, you can do some kind of chemical reaction, ammonia, goes to ammonia, well that's aqueous, going to gas, <laughs> not much room there to write. And the other thing you do is if you make a mistake, you can just erase it with some vinegar. Because after all, vinegar is an acid. So I can use this to cover up my mistakes here. Okay? Now. That's all well and good, but I've got one more demonstration to show you here. Oh, this got a little bit splatter, but that'll be okay. For this one, I'm going to be using concentrated ammonia. Before that, this here was just household ammonia. In fact, it was even diluted household ammonia, diluted with some water. So not that smelly at all. A little bit, but not much. This is concentrated ammonia. This is very potent. When we open this up, it's going to produce enough fumes. You're going to want to turn on the fume hood, but before you do, I've got a message, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a message written on this sign, and I know you can't see it, even though it's written in tape, because it's written on this side of it. And I've got a box 
regular Tupperware box, snap-on lid, but I've got a hole right here, and I made that by taking a test tube that size, heating a Bunsen burner, and pressing it against there to make a nice, even, circular hole. And we're going to not spray this. This never gets wet. Instead, we're going to put it over this ammonia and see what the fumes do. Okay? So, now we can go ahead and turn on the vent there. You can notice how the sign is forming from the top down. Nice illustration of density. Ammonia being a low density gas, rises to the top and colors a sign. You also notice how the initially they come out nice and bright, but now they're turning red as the ammonia manages to diffuse out, turn around, and now start to darken the colors themselves. They'll darken the letters themselves. So we got that. I'll put this back on so you can turn the hood off. And whereas you might think, okay, great, you have to make one of those signs each and every period. Nope. This one, just let it air out. In fact, you can even take this off. Let it air out even faster. Okay, and you can see how I made it there with the tape is on the back side. You have to write backwards, of course. But um, just kind of air that out, and you're ready for the next class. So, there are some wonderful illustrations of acid-based indicator. Natural indicator, the goldenrod, it's the same dye that's in turmeric. And it has that same color change. And you can see how the ammonia fades, but the baking soda just gets darker and darker. And you can even use ammonia fumes for this demonstration. Thank you.